بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا وسندنا ومولانا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته A letter of a kind word responds to those who reject the sawuf by Shaykh Ahmed bin Mustafa Al-Alwi Rahimahullah and today's discussion is in continuation of our last conversation. Here the Shaykh Al-Alwi makes an assessment of the quotations from the book Al-Madkhal which the Salafi author of the Mirror, Shaykh Al-Makki tries to use as proof against the people of the Sawf. And so the Shaykh Al-Alwi places the quotations in its true context as opposed to misleading those who have little knowledge about the author of Al-Madkhal and its contents. And all this can be gathered from his saying, that is to say the saying of the author of Al-Madkhal in which he says some of them to the end of what he mentioned about the conditions which he considered to be nothing but misrepresentation and what helps us to know that he has acknowledged the Sufis that is to say the author of Al-Madkhal when he mentions in one of his statements saying no person would think that what he mentioned is a rejection of any pledge or bay'ah to be taken from its people for themselves with its conditions since the pious ancestors the Salaf as salihin May Allah allow us to benefit from them. They followed the same way. And he continued by saying, Neither do I reject any association towards the shaykhs, that is to say the murshids, with its condition. After an overall discussion, he mentions some of the morals of the people of Tasawwuf as follows, saying, So these were their states and excellent conduct. And they are an example for those who will come after them and cling to their path. And I ask Allah not to turn us away from their state. And this is some of what Al-Madkhal contains, which is a proof that its author had a regard for the doctrine of Tasawwuf, like other great scholars beside him. And he is innocent from that which you have ascribed unto him since you have purposely and selectively quoted in order to harmfully mislead the one who has no knowledge um, about the author of Al-Madkhal. Had it not been for his book bearing testimony in his favor, it would have been assumed that he followed your belief in the condemnation of Sufism of the soul. Your example is like that which has been narrated from Abu Darda radiallahu anhu where he says that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, the messenger of Allah said the example of the one who sits and listens to wisdom and only speaks bad of what he has heard from the speaker is like a man who goes to a shepherd asking him oh Dear shepherd, donate unto me a sheep from your herd. And the shepherd tells him, go and take by the ear of the best sheep. He then goes at night and takes by the ear of a sheep dog. And in the night, the sheep dog usually sleeps amongst the sheep. And in this prophetic narration is the clearest comparison of what you did with the author of Al-Madkhal and others from whom you have transmitted. And as for that which Tartushi and others mentioned according to what is understood from his transmitted chapters, this is not his true belief about the Sufis. This is the very chapter you relied on when you said, and quoting the author of the mirror, you said, he says 
in Al Madkhal that the chap that, that is the chapter which mentions some of those who imitate the Shaykhs um, that and people of power and this is a wide and diverse chapter whilst it is impossible to encompass all of it due to its vastness we shall refer to some of it amongst them are some who claim to be pious and religious and that they are of the people of union with Allah that people who have arrived to the divine knowledge that is to say to the Ma'rifah and he relates the stories of some of the great men who have passed and then decorates his own speech with it in this way he would claim these states upon himself claiming that he has a part in it and amongst them are some who confer on themselves miracles or mu'ajizat breaking through the usual cause of nature while being deprived of it by the characteristic which opposes it then there is the one amongst them who claims to have seen khidr who confirms it with an oath so that its accept its acceptance could be more convincing then there are some who when he wishes to set forth an idea in order to camouflage the masses into believing his speech and that he is amongst the pious he places before them the quotation of evidence from the book of allah in which he quotes on the day of judgment wilt thou see on the day of judgment will you see those who told lies against allah their faces will be turned black he would also swear by allah to this evidence and that he definitely has seen and he was addressed through his heart this is quote unquote from the author of the mirror who quotes from al-madkhal and so in reply the shaykh al-alwi says to him I say that I do not reject the existence of misrepresentation of certain individuals amongst the pious for such is Allah Ta'ala's way with his creation some people have even claimed prophethood and there is no dispute in all of this and the only dispute is your rejection of the doctrine of sufism of the self and your degree your degrading and accusing of heresy the groups of the kirun whichever group they may belong to and what the author of al madkhal has mentioned is a probability since what is it that tells you or him meaning the author of the madkhal that there cannot be sincere ones amongst the individuals referred to whereas that which is hidden belongs to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the messenger of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the messenger the Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam had said that Allah has hidden three in three things, and one of these is the wali, that is to say, the saint of Allah, is hidden in His creation. For this reason, the having of a good opinion is one of the most important qualities of this religion. And Sheikh Abdul Wahab Sharani says in his book. Al Minan. He says, one of the blessings which Allah has bestowed upon me is the veneration of everyone upon whom I see the appearance of the Sufis and the characteristics which they display. This and its like can only appear from someone who believes in the existence of piety within those who are attached to Allah most high and not from those who remove the good from the community in general then you said again the Sheikh al alawi is saying what um, Sheikh al maki how he quotes from al madkhal a man has already claimed all that which has been discussed but I will add more to his long citation saying that some feeble-minded and those who are knowledgeable have been deceived by him he claims that he has a perfect state but Allah has exposed all of them so that they would be an example for those who reflect the Sheikh Al-Alwi responds saying we have always found you to be 
careless in what you have transmitted. But as for attributing this shame to the one who claims all this is correct if it happened according to what you have mentioned. But to ascribe it to the one who believes all this, then no, because Allah Ta'ala has left him to deceive himself. And Umar ibn Abdul Aziz radiallahu anhu said that the one who has deceived us with Allah has only deceived himself. Yes, a liar cannot deceive the one who has a bad opinion, just as he cannot benefit from someone who tells the truth. He is in actual fact deceived by shaitan, the supreme liar, since he has caused him to have a bad opinion of the zakirun. Yet, he did not know that the sign of the love of Allah is the love of his dhikr. And the sign of the love of his dhikr is the love for the zakirun. Are you not aware that the dhikr is a testimony to the faith of the person in any case and that the one who opposes dhikr will testify to the hypocrisy of such a person. We do not know what sin you have committed, but its punishment would be for you because of your attacking the honor of the dhakirun. And then you started to attach all that which is outside of their doctrine to the people of the soul. When you quoted from, again, the author of Al-Madkhal, which says, and amongst them are those who claim to enter the fire, not burning in front of people's eyes. Should this be true, it is considered a reprehensible innovation since the condition of a miracle or a mu'ajiza is to disclose it and to challenge with it. A charismatic gift, a karama, is the opposite of that because when he dis discloses it to the people, it is no longer a karama. They say, by Allah, unless it is in the case of a legitimate necessity, which requires disclosure. Some of them disclose their karama by seizing and charming snakes. Whatever is in all of this is a contradiction to the noble law and deceiving the community with that which has no reality. Since my people, since many people, they do it for their livelihood. So how can it be considered a karama? And some of them eat snakes while they are still alive, which is forbidden because its eating is not permissible, except if it is slaughtered in the manner prescribed by the law. And this is according to those who, have, who hold the view that it is permissible to eat, bearing in mind that it has no reality because it falls under magic and sorcery. And sorcery is forbidden unanimously. So how can he be a saint, notwithstanding that he has committed the acts that are forbidden? And amongst them are also some who do not take off anything from their bodies. This is ugly and abominable because it resembles the practice of the monks. It is also dirty and spreads disease as well as the fact that it is prohibited. There are those of them who wear the fiber and things that do not cover the private parts. This is quote unquote again from the Madkhal which was mentioned by uh, Sheikh al Maki. And in my opinion, says the Shaykh al Ali, whatever you have gathered in this section has no aim other than defaming the honor of the Sufis and defiling their character. Your intention is also to affirm that which you have placed in the mind of the reader, that this is the Sufis' character. Far be it that the one who has regard for the principles of the Sauf the usul, the principles of Sufism, knowing its laws to believe that this is the legality of the Sufis or that, or that which they rely on. Their writings have the most adequate proof, alhamdulillah, if they have ever said that or instructed it and whoever invents something will bear its punishment. 
Sufism will always remain a sun that will never darken, that will never be darkened, and a full moon that will never sink as long as the sunnah is acted upon and protected. Provided the law governs over the Sufis and others, and the Sufis, they have more knowledge about Allah's religion than you and your kind. I could almost say that they are the most knowledgeable servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concerning Allah and his laws. And the doubts will be removed on the day when man will be gathered before him. And in the end, what you have implied by way of allusion, you sanctioned the opposite by you yourself saying, this is again quoting um, Sheikh al Maki, and he says, and amongst them are those who wear patched clothes, which the commander of the righteous, that is Omar ibn al-Khattab, the Khalifa, radiallahu anhu, may Allah be pleased with him, prohibited from wearing, um, and this is known to us as Budarbala, to the point that some of the general people named their children Budarbala, which has the meaning of piety. This is amongst the disgusting nicknames in the law. And so in reply, says the Sheikh Lalwi, I say that this, that it is your nature to reject things and then to affirm it with mere opinion without considering Allah's judgment in it. As you have mentioned, the prohibition of the wearing of patched clothes, attributing attributing it to Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab anhu. That which is more widely known is contrary to it since he himself made use of it, Sayyidina Umar. So the reports have recurred from a number of sources and one of it is narrated, it is narrated by, or it's a narration of from Anas ibn Malik Anhu, may Allah be pleased with him, who said, I saw Umar ibn Khattab circumambulating the sacred house, making the tawaf around the Kaaba, wearing a coat in which there were 12 patches, one of which was from tanned skin. Thus, what you have mentioned about Sayyidina Umar's prohibition of wearing a patched garment is far-fetched. Whereas it is confirmed that he wore it himself. So is it correct for him to prohibit a model and then carry out the like of it? Especially when the lawgiver, the Sharia, has made it permissible according to a narration in which the Prophet said to say that in Aisha radiallahu anha, if you want to follow me, do not shed a garment until you have patched it. And there are more examples of this kind, but we do not know what it is that you have attributed to Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu. Is it merely falsification on your part, or a weakness in the narration, or a restricted prohibition? Subhanallah. Here we see, coming to the end of this discussion, another clear example and an excellent display of the sound knowledge and refined character of the Shaykh uh, al alawi rahimahullah, and the way in which the Shaykh al alawi exposed the incompetence and lack of true scholarship from the author of the mirror. This is the sound response that is given throughout this treatise for every assault and accusation made by the author of the mirror, who exerts all efforts only with the intention to destroy the honor and the reality of the soul. And this is what we see amongst many of the so-called Wahhabis and Salafis. But to the author of the mirror, we say, and to those of his kind, يَا نَاطِحَ الْجَبَلِ الْعَالِي لِتُوَهِّنَهُ إِشْفِكْ عَلَى الرَّأْسِ لَا تَشْفِكْ عَلَى الْجَبَلِ O thou who buttest the high mountains, trying to dislodge it with thy horns. Take pity on thy head, not on the mountain. And remember, says Imam Ali, radiallahu anhu wa karram Allah wajha, 
he says that the earth will never be void of those who uphold Allah's proofs, whether they be known publicly or hidden, so that Allah's proofs and so that his messages are never erased. Yet how rare are they by Allah? They are the fewest in number, but the greatest in stature. Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqan wa razukana attiba'ah wa arina al-batila batilan wa razukana jtiyaba bi rahmatika ya arham rahimin Ameen wa alhamdulillah